Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Marauders, issue number 16. I love this book. I love this book. There's a wicked book. There's something I would have added to it, but eh, I love this book, man. Let's get to who made this comic book. Let's go fairly deep into what happened here. We're, gonna, we're really going to get into some psychology and this sense of revenge, and is it sometimes justified or not? Uh, I might have an interesting take for y'all. Okay, so this issue is called Consequences. Oh, yes. Apropos, uh, Jerry Duggan is the writer. Jerry Dugan, sorry. Uh, Stefano Caselli, artist. Edgar Delgado, color art. VCs Corey Petit on letters and designed by Tom Mueller. Russell Dodderman and Matthew Wilson are the cover artists, and Jonathan Hickman is still the head of X. Jack Lee, uh, Jack Lee, Jack Lee, and and uh, Stan Kirby they created the X Men. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna keep that mistake. I'm gonna leave it like that. <laughs> um. I noticed that the beginning, you know, there, there's every so often there's that beginning quote by a character. In this particular case, I will live again only to kill you. And when I return, you will beg for my blade, says Kate Pride. Kate Pride has something else to say at the end of this book also in the exact same format with that, you know, little quote page, right? I found that to be quite interesting. Now... We see the kill Shaw thing comes into play in a really great way because she just does the the straight right and then the the left cross and just boop boop you know bit bat. Um, I I'm used to the idea that Shaw won't feel any kind of pain whatsoever when he's hit. He's just gonna look at it like you know ah, I'm stronger now. What are you gonna do about it? But they've changed a lot of that. Even with uh, Captain Marvel, she actually gets hurt when she's absorbing energy to make her stronger. A lot of that doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. It's different people's uh, interpretations of how the power works. I ain't going to get mad at nobody about that. It's just kind of taking me out of the place that I was already in, where Colossus can throw a, a, a running haymaker at Shaw, and he just sits there, you know, stands there. <laughs> Hit me again! Even as recently as X-Men Blue. Like, you couldn't hurt the freaking guy, right? And all of a sudden... No, he could bleed, but he's just like, ah, I'm stronger now. Um, I find it to be, with all due respect, the greatest crime when a hero uses the weapons of a villain. I understand the idea of just desserts. Anybody who sits there and argues, but Professor, look at what he did to her. You are 100% correct. The funny thing is, so am I. It's not about, well, it is about right or wrong, but it's not about which one of us is right, you or me. It, that doesn't matter. You know, maybe you agree with me. But to me, if you're a hero, it puts you on a different level. It puts you at a different pedestal, like we're mutants, we don't do this. And that's different than the hero aspect, because we could argue that none of the people in this comic book are in and of themselves heroes. Honestly, Storm is in this comic book. Can we necessarily consider her as a hero? She will do things for a people, whether it's her people or not. She will do things for a people who she sees as being oppressed, even if it's not the right thing. We've seen her do this before. She's not a she's not a bad spirit by any way, means, shape, form, whatever. But she's I wouldn't necessarily call her good. The lines between human and mutant and hero and villain are really shaded nowadays, especially in the Kirkoan type books, right? But even prior to this, I'd say that Storm can be heroic, and she is heroic, but she's not necessarily a hero. She's not going to necessarily sacrifice herself for complete strangers to do the right thing, so to speak. Um, she does have her own goals and agendas. She is a mutant. She is from an oppressed class. So, you know, there's that. It's hard to, to consider mutants to be heroes unless they're doing the old Chris Claremont or even, you know, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. Oh, darn, I did it the right, the right way this time. Unless we're considering those days and days like those, you know, it's, it's hard to really consider mutants heroes. But the idea of a mutant using that mutant nullifying device, even though it was used against Kate also, I find that to be, it's like tit for tat. Is that, mm, I don't know, would 
Emma, yes. Kate, maybe. Maybe that's the reason why Storm didn't show up in the first place. Because I can't see Storm, of all people on that island, ever agreeing to the use of that, even if it was, and it was, used against her. A different one was used against her. I can't see her ever going along with that. Maybe she, maybe that's just why she didn't want to be there in the beginning. I don't know. Um, I, I hate that I have to make headcanon for something like that. Uh, I am also bothered that Bishop, it's right in the beginning, didn't show up for this. Bishop is supposed to be the right-hand man, literally, to the Red Queen, Kate Pride. So why didn't she, or why wasn't he there? Why didn't he want to exact some form of revenge? Will we see it later? I really hope that this isn't just some dropped thing. Because right now it's just a bunch of girls beating up on a guy. You know what I'm saying? Which is, okay, if Bishop were there, it would have evened it out a lot more. And it would have made it, you know, like, we're all here for Kate. Kate also had that that statement in there about, um, what was it, maybe men are just too emotional for such and such and such. I hope that Dugan isn't one of those super extreme leftist mentality but centrist voting uh, type peoples. I really don't want to bring politics into this, but like when you hear a guy say something like that, it just like everything like puckered butt cringe level, you know, so it's it's really bad when you see that. It's like, dude, you're a guy. Why are you writing something like this? Why? Why are you making me feel like this is where you're going with this? Um, that being said, oh, it's totally true. <laughs> if guys can say that to girls, girls can say that to guys. So shut up about it. Right. It just it was a bit much there. It, it, it felt just a little hint like pandering. Is it? That's a shame. Is it not? Okay, I read too much into it. I'm okay with it. Aside from that, though, the thing about getting revenge on someone, only Kate and Lockheed were hurt here. Kate and Lockheed got their revenge. Kate herself should have really gotten more involved in this. Emma getting into this, you'd figure she doesn't necessarily have a, a play in this, but she does. And that's the thing about it. Emma didn't want... Shaw on this council to begin with. In fact, it's, um, I think Magneto had something to do with it, if I remember correctly, but Charles definitely did. Professor X, you know? I think that Magneto was there also, and they both said, you're going to have to have um, uh, him as the Black King. Sorry. That's just the way it's going to have to work. And she didn't like that at all. She was really adamant against it. He's just going to bring it down. He's too manipulative. And she was 100% correct on this in every way imaginable. So does she deserve revenge? I guess. But it's like, if I tell you to watch your little brother, and we all know that the little brother is a bad egg, do you get revenge on the little brother or do you get revenge on me? You, you get what I'm saying? I feel like Emma's, she's had a long-term grudge, long-time grudge against Shaw. I get it. But I feel like she should also go after Professor X and Magneto on this. I feel it shouldn't just be some strong wall, you know, some stonewalling. I think she should actually go after them. Because if you notice... I mean, everybody's got a story. Exodus is the only one who doesn't have much of a story. Yet. Yet. But everybody else on that Quiet Council, more and more, is getting some kind of a story. They're not being explored, and they're certainly not being explored quickly enough. Not for my taste, at least. But I guess it, it, it would make it easier if there wasn't some stupid swords thing in between all of this, but whatever. And if you like the event, I'm not holding against you. I didn't like the event. I'm speaking for myself. Um, this was, this was interesting. The use of the poison. I thought that was, oh, also there was a, a saber tooth reference in here. Aha. I'm glad to see that old fur and bones ain't forgotten yet, but <laughs> it's twice. In fact, before a saber tooth uses you as a pillow, it's like, dude, the, just the threat of saber tooth should be enough. I think that in the end, the, what all of this implies and where this went is impressive because if you did feel sh uh, bad for Shaw at any moment in this, the end should completely eradicate all of those feelings of sympathy for the man. He is a manipulative piece of crap. There is nothing redeeming about this guy, not even his so-called love for his son, because there's not really much there. And we, we know he's going to betray Shinobi at any moment also, as soon as it's more opportunity for him than not, right? But 
the thing about it is, he is ridiculously manipulative. So by them torturing him and hurting him like this, and then at the end, that smile, that wicked-ass freaking smile at the end, like, I'm coming back, that says something. That that It was great that that happened. A lot of us might not have liked that, but think of how important just that smile was, and then the, the full toothy grin, right? It showed that you... The torture you did to me, sure, it may have hurt here, there, whatever. Nobody likes getting kicked in the nuts. You know what I'm saying? Um, women, don't compare it to having a baby. Compare it to getting kicked in the ovaries, okay? Not in the vag, no. Specifically, kicked directly in the ovaries. Imagine that kind of exposure. There. That is, in my opinion, the ultimate way to express the pain that a man feels. Um, anyway... I, I I think that the torture that he went through, no, I, I, I don't think it was as much because what did he, what does he really love? You can't kill Shinobi in front of him and it's okay. Like they, like he did with uh, Lockheed, you know what I'm saying? That's what I think hurt Kate the most was that he killed Lockheed. So having everybody get their pound of flesh, so to speak, was genius. I loved it. Again, Bishop should have been there also. Excuse me. Um, I feel that... I feel that with how manipulative Shaw has always been, this kind of works. That they're trying to manipulate the manipulator. But I feel like they're going to see in the future that they were better off just killing him and hiding the body or something like that, you know? I feel like they were better off just doing something like that because you can't get back at Shaw. He's always going to come back at you. And as long as they don't do some stupid death thing, like the X, I, yeah, it was an X-Men Blue most recently, the way that he went out. I felt that was just really weak. I felt that putting Shaw out like that was just a, a really soft way of doing it. It's like, dude, you, you have to work to beat Shaw. That can't be easy. Think about the way that he was beaten in the X-Men movie, uh, Gifted, X-Men, get whatever the hell that thing was called. Um, I don't want to go into that, but whatever, that first X-Men movie when they came back, when we thought that it was all over after freaking uh, Wolverine Origins, right? When they came back and they had the X-Suits and Havoc was in the movie and all that stuff, the, the whole coin through, uh, that, that coin from Magneto's childhood slowly through Shaw's head, that's the kind of way that you defeat Shaw, even if you're not going to kill him. You, It has to be something where it's like, I don't know how to beat him. And finally, you come up with some ingenious way to beat him. That's how you got to do it. Not some, oh, I overtaxed his secondary mutation. Eh. So even in this way that it was done, I really, I, I can't help but to say I really liked it. I know there's going to be a lot of people who felt that it was anticlimactic. I, I think that that was the point. Because trying to manipulate a master manipulator that's like trying to pickpocket Remy LeBeau. I don't think you're going to have much success in that regard. You know? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. That smile. smoke. It spoke volumes. Give it another three issues before you bring him back, though. That, I think, will be... You really get that feeling, right? That when he comes back, it's going to be even worse. There's got to be some other story to tell. There's plenty of other stories to tell in the meantime. Don't let him get his revenge yet. Give it at least three issues, right? Anyway, guys, I enjoyed this. It's great to be back on Marauders. Uh, I'll try and do a live uh, Dawn of X, uh, not Dawn of X, uh, X of Swords thing as soon as I'm finished reading them all. I just have to get the inclination to do it. I'll talk to you all later. Like the video, watch an ad. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.